picked this bottle up at an antique show a couple months back and it said big stick beverages and it looks like a baseball bat I thought so I picked it up and here we are so let's see how Teddy Roosevelt might be involved in this story on this episode of antique bottle stories <laughs> Well, on the other side of this bottle, it says Will G. Keck, Incorporated, Kecksburg, PA. And there's a big K at the bottom. And that's all we have to go off of. So let's start by talking about Will's dad. Johann Martin Keck was born in Germany in 1836. He moved to America when he was 21, when he changed his name to John. That was in 1857. He married Margaret and they had two boys. A couple years later, he bought five acres in Greensburg, and he called it Kecksburg. In 1866, he opened a store in an 8x10 room with only $500 worth of goods. By 1890, some 20 years later, he had over $30,000 worth of goods in his store, so he grew pretty substantially. History says that he was very honorable and energetic and sold his goods at decent prices. He owned 14 houses and 320 acres of valuable land, and we see from this census that he is also farming on that land. And as of 1890, when this story was written, he had been postmaster of Kecksburg for the last 24 years. As soon as his two sons, William and Harry, graduated, they joined him in the mercantile business under the name of J.M. Keck and Sons. I did find some examples of bottles online with this firm's name on it. So the earliest that these particular bottles could be dated is 1886. His store was a general store. History doesn't say that he was a bottler, but he sure was. So William George Christian Keck was born in 1863. His brother Harry Edward is three years younger than him. They actually had been working at the store when they were in their early teens, like we see in this 1880 census. They were just officially added to the firm when they graduated. By 1900, both boys are married now. They've moved out of the house, but they're all next door neighbors. Will G. Keck also helped bring the first telephone company called the Citizens Telephone Company in 1906. It's still in business. In 1910, we see William and his wife, Sarah, and they have five living children. One died as a baby. They have four boys and one girl. They have kids ranging from the age of 21 to the age of four. Wow. The oldest boys, Martin and Henry, one's working at the store and the other one's at the bottling house. In 1919, Johan died at age 83. The next year in the 1920 census, William is 56 now and he's listed as a bottler in a beverage company. His sons, Martin and Dan, are married and live in houses next door to him. Martin's working at the store, but Dan is a truck driver. I'm not sure how the dynamics of the two businesses work together, but my guess is that at some point the general store is sold off and the Kecks continued with the bottling firm. The firm is then called Will G. Keck Incorporated, and I don't know if that's just the bottling piece of the business or if it's combined or what. But we don't really hear anything about the general store anymore from here on out. On February 19th, 1927, we see William G. Keck filed for a patent for the design of this bottle. It was ribbed. It kind of reminds me of a ketchup bottle, but it has a big stick on the bottle. So why big stick? Teddy Roosevelt while publicly addressing the Minnesota State Fair on September 2nd, 1901, says, A good many of you are probably acquainted with the old African proverb, Speak softly and carry a big stick. You will go far. Well, this saying was used a lot after this. I found a 1909 advertisement for a cough syrup claiming it goes after colds with a big stick and kills them quicker than other remedies. So... This saying was a well-known household quote. Two years after Will gets this patent approved, in 1930, he dies. He was 66. Five years later, we see Will G. Keck Incorporated is still in business and now distributors for Yingling's Beer and Ale. I found this random photo. It says, Say Kecks on the back of the truck there. And it says, Natural Mineral Waters on the side of the truck. 
Also, on the building back there, it says Kex Orange Crush. So, here's a photo of Kex plant. I'm not sure if the plant still stands because the address takes me to an empty lot. One of these buildings could be it, but none of them really look like it. I thought maybe I'm looking maybe at the wrong end of the street, so I went to the other end of the street, and it doesn't look like any of them could be this building either. March 1st, 1939, a fire broke out at 3 a.m. It says it destroyed a large warehouse, a smaller warehouse, a garage, and two trucks. At the time this was printed, it was believed to be purposely done. It was estimated $35,000 worth of damage. The two warehouses were filled with empty cases and bottles that had been washed and ready to get filled. So they planned on rebuilding fireproof buildings and then they kept going. The 1940 census shows three of the boys are next door neighbors to each other and all of them are working at the bottling plant. I see two other neighbors named Ray Umstead and Clarence Briner who are also working there. So the whole street's involved. So let's recap real quick. Will G. Keck had four boys, Henry, Daniel, Martin Ira, and Lawrence Vernon. I'm telling you this so that you can keep track when their names pop up later. Here's a 1940 ad in the paper mentioning Kecksburg Mineral Spring Water and Big Stick Ginger Ale. So we're up to World War II. Here's registration cards for Martin Ira and those two neighbors showed up, Ray Umstead and Clarence Briner all confirming that they're still working at Will G. Keck Incorporated. Here's a 1942 article talking about the Keck Company having a dinner honoring some of the employees that are headed out to Texas to join the Army Air Corps. Vernon Keck is on the right, and it says at this time he's the vice president. And a guy named Wendell Keck is mentioned as one of the ones going. Now Wendell is Martin Iris' son. It says he served 45 months in the Southwest Pacific, he just died in 2018 at age 96. Wow. It says he worked for Kex for 25 years, and then it says when it became Pepsi, he continued working there for another 25 years. Remember how the neighbor Ray Umstead keeps popping up? Well, I just learned that Wendell's mom is Ray Umstead's sister, Carrie. Okay, so I see that they're in-laws, not just neighbors. So the next year, 1943, we see Ray Umstead once again pop up, this time, his 37-year-old wife suffered a head injury when she fell while pulling a skid at the bottling plant. It says that she's at the hospital getting x-rays. So let's see if she pulls through. Yeah, it looks like she does. She lives for another 20 years or so. And here's just a random wanted ad for truck drivers that are draft exempt. In 1944, here's a story about a 13-year-old girl who was struck by a Keck truck. Her parents are suing for $10,000 for her injuries. So let's go see if she survived. Okay, after a few searches, it says that she's been married for 53 years to a guy named Frank Ware. And in a strange twist, Frank would later be a manager at this same Pepsi plant. Okay, so let's get back on track. This 1948 article is talking about the taxes being too high, causing bottlers to face bankruptcy. Several bottlers attended this meeting but really, I just wanted to mention that it says Daniel Keck is president of both the Will G. Keck Incorporated and Pepsi. The next year, 1949, Daniel is looking for a distributor for Keck's beverages and Pepsi. Big Stick Ginger Ale is still around in 1950. In 1953, this article says that Will G. Keck will be distributing a lemon-lime soda called Bubble Up. The last time I see a newspaper ad for Big Stick Beverages is in 1955. In 1959, Keck Firm is sold. It says, Announcement has been made of the purchase of the Will G. Keck Pepsi Cola Bottling Company of Kecksburg, with all the related real estate both in Kecksburg and Uniontown, by two guys named John Reese and John Robert Shaw. This says that Pepsi had been bottled and sold here since 1887, and that from here on out, it will continue as a Pepsi Cola bottler. So essentially, Keck products end here. This 1961 article says that John Robert Shaw is president of the firm. In 1988, Pepsi bought the plant. 
This little piece of an article in 1999 mentions that someone is employed at the Pepsi in Kecksburg. So I guess it's still going at this point. So I tried to see if it closed or burned down or something, but even in John Robert Shaw's obituary, it doesn't mention the fate of the plant. So my bottle is a big stick quality beverages bottle. I thought it looked like a baseball bat. Now I know it's just a big stick. And we know it's a ginger ale beverage. And we know that Big Stick began in 1928, and it ends in the late 50s. I think my version of the bottle with the orange peel is later than the original version of the bottle with the ribbing. I even found a plain, no texture version online. But all these would be earlier than the ACL versions. Although 1936 is when ACL bottles first came on the scene, it wasn't popular until around the 50s. And there's no date on this anywhere, but I would say it's probably 30s or 40s bottle. And this sucker's pretty heavy too. And that's it for today, guys. We'll see you on the next one. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next time.